Praise the Lord. Welcome to Living Proof TV. I'm Bishop Joseph Castile, and we are here right outside of the old city in Jerusalem, Israel. We're actually standing here in the very first Jewish community outside of the old city. What happened when the Jews began to come back, they came back, of course, to the old city to inhabit the old waste places, the places where they have dreamt about and prayed about and have been displaced for centuries. And they were all living in here, right behind us, in the old city. And if you see behind me that blue circular cone with the cross on top, that is actually the precipice of Mount Zion. This was taken by King David from the Jebusites thousands of years ago, and it became the eternal capital of Israel. Notice I said eternal because Jerusalem is Israel's eternal capital. And we can thank the president, Donald Trump, for historically announcing that Jerusalem is Israel's eternal capital and that the U.S. Embassy should move to Jerusalem. And since then, many other countries have announced their plans to also move their embassies here to Jerusalem. So we're excited to be here right at Mount Zion. Now let me tell you a little bit about Mount Zion. That uh, precipice there was called Mount Zion. But later on, throughout history and throughout scripture, the whole area uh, known as the Old City, that had become known as Mount Zion. And then the concept has then expanded to Jerusalem being called Mount Zion. So Jerusalem is called Mount Zion. And then we get even deeper into the spiritual realm. We see that the, the holy people of God and the place of their divine residence in the spirit realm is also Mount Zion. So you could come and you could visit Mount Zion without actually ever coming here to the physical Mount Zion. You belong to Mount Zion, even though you maybe have never been to the physical location of Mount Zion. However, I would encourage everyone to come back home and to visit Mount Zion and to spend time with your God, spend time with your Lord right here on Mount Zion. One of my favorite scriptures here in the Bible is in the book of Obadiah. And it's a scripture that has always meant something special to me. And I want to share with you today in the book of Obadiah. So I'm going to use my Bible app here to get to the book of Obadiah. Why don't we take the covenant and say, blessed shall be the fruit of my body. Blessed shall be my kids. Or instead of your kids running off on drugs and all kinds of stuff and the problems, declare the fruit of my body shall be blessed. Appropriate. My children shall be blessed. They're the fruit of my body and they have no choice to be blessed. Call now and get Joseph Castillo's Blessings and Curses CD series, which includes almost six hours of in-depth Bible teaching and inspirational preaching on how to identify curses in your family, how to release the blessing of God, canceling genetic curses. This is an exclusive offer for our Living Proof audience. Yours for a donation of only $49. Shipping and handling are included. In addition, order and we will throw in a free USB thumb drive for your computer along with your CD set. We're going to look here at Obadiah. There's only one chapter. And we're going to look at verse 17. And it says, A pound Mount Zion. Here we are, right here, looking at Mount Zion. But we understand that this is not speaking of this physical precipice, which was conquered by King David from the Jebusites. But we're talking about spiritual Mount Zion, the mountain of God, the kingdom of God, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and his people, and the cloud of witnesses. It says, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. This is one of the blessed promises of God. I know as human beings, we find ourselves 
oftentimes in tough situations, struggling with sins, issues, bondages, addictions, sometimes generational curses that have been passed down from our, our upbringing or from our bloodline. But God promises that in Mount Zion, it, it shall have deliverance. There shall be deliverance in Mount Zion. That means when you come into the kingdom of Christ, you come into a kingdom where deliverance is the children's bread. If you are in a bondage, in a sin, in an oppression, and you feel that you have to just live this way, I've heard many people say, well, it's just my thorn in the flesh. Paul had a thorn in the flesh, this is my thorn in the flesh. And some people say that Paul's thorn in the flesh was that he was had bad eyes. Some people say that his thorn in the flesh, and this is the one they use to make excuses for their sins, as they say, oh, well, he probably had a lust problem. He probably was struggling with lust. That's his thorn in the flesh, and God doesn't remove it. And all these kind of teachings have gone on. But what Paul, the Apostle Paul's thorn in the flesh was, states clearly in Scripture that it is a messenger of Satan sent to buffet him. It's very clear. So that thorn in the flesh was everywhere that Paul went, everywhere that he preached, he would be persecuted, he would be stoned, he would be beaten, he would be shipwrecked, he would be snake bitten. It's like some of the people on our tours, dropping their phone in the water, losing their wallet in the taxi. And just everything was happening to Paul. And Paul said, this is a messenger of Satan sent to buffet me. And Barnabas would come behind Paul into the same city and he would have revival. Everybody loved Barnabas. And Paul would go, people would fall asleep and then lean over the balcony fall out the window and die in the middle of his sermons. Everywhere he went, there was a messenger of Satan, a thorn in the flesh that would attack and buffet him. But God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Continue on, persevere through the persecutions, persevere through the afflictions, for my grace will strengthen you. In Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And that is a twisted of a scripture to say that Paul's thorn in the flesh was some kind of sin that he can never get delivered from. Because in Mount Zion, there is deliverance for the children of God. You see, the reason why we don't see the miracle power of God is because our belief system is not lined up with the Word of God's belief system. But when we begin to line up our belief system with the Word of God, then we begin to see the miraculous. Amen? Call now and get Joseph Castillo's Supernatural Healing CD series, which includes almost six hours of in-depth Bible teaching and inspirational preaching on how to fight for your healing, when is God's timing for a miracle, is it God's will to heal everyone? This is an exclusive offer for our Living Proof audience yours for a donation of only $49. Shipping and handling are included. In addition, order and we will throw in a free USB thumb drive for your computer along with your CD set. And he goes on here to say, there shall be holiness. Holiness and deliverance we see are tied one in the same scripture. The reason why holiness and deliverance is tied is because you can't live holy if you're in bondage. And oftentimes we like to judge or criticize or look down on somebody because of their alcohol addiction, their cigarette addiction, uh, their pornography addiction, or their lust addiction. I mean, some people, you know, they have a spirit of whoredom. And they sleep around with all kinds of men or all kinds of women. And now with gender fluidity, they do both. And we look and judge them and condemn them. And we don't welcome them in the church or, or consider this person to be a bad wife or a bad husband. Listen, I've gotten calls after calls. Just the last year alone, I've gotten two good friends that have called me up and said, I've came home, caught my wife in adultery. Shocking because this situation is, is a wife. But we know historically that men have also been caught in adulterous relationships. And we're quick to judge an adulterous woman and our adulterous man. Now, one of the guys, he left his wife because of it. The other guy decided to forgive his wife and he prayed for her. And demons manifested and she got deliverance. So she had an issue of whoredom 
and she was sleeping around with many guys. There was photos and videos and all kinds of things he found. She was sleeping around with many guys. He had the right to put her away, just like the other guy I know put his wife away immediately, took his daughter and just left. However, this particular uh, brother, he decided to have grace and mercy and understanding that his wife has a bondage, that she is not holy, and she has not hurt him intentionally or betrayed the marriage covenant intentionally, but she's been driven by bondage. She needs deliverance. So we have to understand that in order to walk in holiness, we have to have deliverance. Without deliverance, we cannot be holy because in our love for God and our desire to be holy, our desire to be uh, faithful to a mate or our desire to be free from uh, addictions and substance abuses or our desire to be right before the Lord is not going to overpower a bondage. So you have to have deliverance before you can have holiness. So if you are struggling with holiness, you might need to consider that you might need deliverance. Now, many Christians understand deliverance as being demon-possessed, and I'm demon-possessed, and I need deliverance from the demon-possessed, and I'm a Christian. I don't believe I could be demon-possessed. Listen, a Christian, can they have a demon? That is the million-dollar question people have. Well, let me tell you, a Christian could have anything they want to have. If you want it, you can have it. And if you want to have sin in your life and you want to have a uh, look at horoscopes and play with Ouija boards, and then you can have those demons if you want them. Now, the word possessed is what often confuses people because we think of the word possessed meaning that the demons have total control of their body, life, and spirit forever. But you have to understand the, the man that was demon-possessed in the Garden of Gardenia, he had a legion of demons. A Roman legion was 12,000 soldiers. So this guy had about 12,000 demons on the inside of him. Yet, the demons could not stop him from coming to Jesus, falling at his feet, and worshiping the Lord. So just because someone's demon-possessed doesn't mean they cannot go to church, cannot read the Bible, cannot pray. Because demons, even 12,000 demons, cannot stop your free will. Free will was a gift given to man. As when you yield to the demons, you allow them to take residence in your soul or in your body, in your life. So Christians can entertain and welcome demons in their soul, in their mind, in their heart, in their will, their emotions, in their physical bodies. And there is a need for deliverance in the Christian church. Now, people who always like to say demons can't have, uh, Christians cannot have demons or whatever, I find it quite funny because every demon I've ever encountered, every time I've ever had some demon speaking to me saying, my name is Beelzebub and you can't cast me out and all these crazy encounters, they've only always happened in the church. It didn't happen in the bars, in the nightclubs, in the gay and lesbian communities when we go and evangelize at the LGBT parades. This has all happened in the church. So for people to think that Christians cannot have demons is very ignorant. The point is, is that if you have occult backgrounds of wicked, lascivious sins in your background, or you, after you be, got saved, you got involved with things like that, you could open the door for demons. Demons could come in and they could build a nest and they could fester. And that's why Christians need deliverance. And to walk in holiness, you need deliverance. And God promised that in Mount Zion, when you come into the kingdom of Christ, and you're translated out of that old life, now you become a born-again Christian, that deliverance is the children's bread. There is deliverance upon Mount Zion. And then there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Some people are still waiting for their financial breakthrough. Let me tell you, if God made you a millionaire and you got a lust issue, you'd live your life like Hugh Hefner. And you would forget about God and you'd be a non-practicing, non-devout Christian because you're feeding your lust problem. Because what happens is money magnifies you. If you are a generous person and I give you a million dollars, you that magnifies your generosity and you'll give to more. If you are an alcoholic and I give you a million dollars, you'll drink yourself to death. It reminds me of one rapper that had an obesity issue. His name was Big Pun. 
and Big Pun sang the famous song, I Don't Want to Be a Player No More. And Big Pun, as he, as he prospered and became wealthy, yeed himself to death. So you see, money will magnify who you are. And if you still need deliverance, if you're still in bondage and you're not walking in holiness, and then you begin to possess what God has, has, has put aside it to bless you with, and you are not delivered, your blessing will become your destruction. So before the house of Jacob can possess their possessions, they have to be delivered so they can walk in holiness and so that they can have money versus money having them. It's okay to have money, but it's not okay for money to have control over you and to be the fuel that fuels your bondages and your iniquities and your sins. So if you want to walk in the possessions that God has promised, the house of Joseph and the house of Jacob, you need to get deliverance in your life so you can walk in holiness. And Mount Zion is not just this, this precipice behind us, but it is the, the inheritance and the place that you step into when you come to faith in Jesus Christ. And when you're born again, you belong to Mount Zion and God has promised you that he has a provision for deliverance through you. And that deliverance is through the blood of Jesus. Now, oftentimes people cannot get self-deliverance. There is such thing as self-deliverance and I'll give you a scripture for it. Jesus said that if, how can you cast the, the moat out of your brother's eye or the splinter out of your brother's eye if you have a beam in yours? Take that beam out of yours first, then help your brother. So there, that scripture says that you can take the beam out of your own eye. That's a scripture for self-deliverance. You can lay hands on yourself. You can break the power of the devil off yourself. But if you get to a certain degree of bondage, you need somebody's help. And especially if you have to, you're in the degree of demonic bondage where you, you, when you begin to pray, you, you, you fall asleep, you begin to read the Bible, you fall asleep. Uh, you know, w when you begin to pray, something takes over and you lose consciousness, you pass out, or you can't say the name of Jesus. At that point, then you need somebody to come alongside with authority and who knows who they are in Christ to help lead you and pray with you and help you together with your own will to get deliverance. Because it's important to understand you can't get deliverance when your will is yielded to the enemy even a little bit. You have to be 100% ready to give up that sin for God to deliver you. The reason why is because the devils will hold on to legalities. And if they know you like it, if they know you want it, if you, they know you're just repenting because you feel guilty, but you still want to go back to that sin, they'll hold on to that. And regardless of what somebody prays, even if they cast the devil out, when that pastor leaves or that brother leaves, they'll come right back to you 15 minutes later with seven friends stronger and mightier than they were. That's why I don't do deliverance on many people. Sometimes people call and ask for deliverance. And I'm very careful and I turn down people and sometimes I turn down people I shouldn't turn down. And just because I wasn't quite sure. But I don't want to gamble and cast one demon out of you and next week you have seven. And the Bible says the last state of that person is worse than the first state. So we have to be very cautious when somebody is wanting deliverance. Do you really want to be delivered? Are you really to set this down? Are you really to pick up your cross and follow God? If so, then you can come and you can get 100% deliverance. If you're a homosexual, if you're a lesbian, if you're a drug addict, if you're a pedophile, God can give you 100% deliverance if you would be sick and tired of that sin and willing to give it up for Jesus Christ. I remember one famous pastor by the name of John Bevere. He was crying out to God for deliverance and he went up for fasting and prayer. And during the fast, he's, God said, I'm not going to deliver you because you still like it. As long as you like it, I will not set you free because you're holding on to it, not me. So God told John Bevere, I'm not going to deliver you until you are totally no longer take pleasure in this sin when you don't want it anymore. 
he had to come to the point where he had to hate his own sin. And when he hated it, and he was ready to give it up, and he no longer loved it, God was right there faithful to bring him deliverance because it's his bread. That means it belongs to you. Deliverance belongs to you. If you're watching me today and you are struggling with an issue of your life, whether it's depression, cigarette addiction, homosexuality, LGBT, pedophilia, masturbation, or any other kind of alcoholism, and you're struggling with these things and you want deliverance, and you, in your heart, are tired of it, you no longer take pleasure in it, and you want to be holy, you want to take your bread. I want to pray for you today. Just close your eyes, and I want you to do this with me, and I want you to repent and renounce it and ask for deliverance. So you can pray after me and say, Jesus, I come to you right now. I confess my sin. Confess my idolatry in my sin. And I ask you to help me have no other gods before you. I surrender this to you. I no longer want to be in this bondage. And I thank you that in Mount Zion, in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have promised deliverance. And I ask you to deliver me now by the blood of the Lamb. Let it cleanse, wash, free me from every addiction in Jesus' name. Now you can lay your hands on your head or on your chest or your body. And I want you to say, in Jesus' name, I command the spirit of bondage and the spirit tied to my sin come out and loose me now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you who the Son sets free is free indeed. And I've been made free today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want you to don't go back to that sin anymore. I was delivered from cigarettes, totally delivered, didn't want it, but I went back and did it again out of habit, just habit, like, oh, you know, just out of habit. And then I got bound up again. So now that you have a feeling of freedom right now, some of you have felt the wind uh, blow upon you, some of you have felt a heaviness come off you, you've been delivered, you're delivered right now. If you go back to it because you're bored or out of habit or someone stresses you out, you'll get back in that bondage again. So make a decision like I did with cigarettes. I'll never borrow any and I'll never buy any. If you don't borrow any, you don't buy any. If it's alcohol, don't borrow any, don't buy any. Or if it's pornography, don't go to any and pornographic websites, don't look. Make a decision that you won't open the door and you will stay free because deliverance is your bread. And now you can walk in holiness. As you walk in holiness, it's time for you now to go get everything that God has promised for Joseph in the house of Jacob to possess his possessions. That's you. You are the house of Joseph. You are the inheritance of Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You belong to Mount Zion, the kingdom of God. And it's time for you to get everything God has for you. Declaring his praise Ignore